Today, we are going to talk about the all new features released in our Exit Automation's Rec and Roll Dynamics library of the NuGet packages. So if you have been following along or if you are using this library, you just go to the Exit Automation Rec and Roll Dynamics package over here. The last version we had was the 1.0.0, but today there is a major upgrade happen and the version has now turned from 1.0.0 to 1.1.1. So there is not a lot of download happened so far because it's just released, but you can see that this particular version has got a lot of different features which probably was not there in our existing uh, uh, existing release and also you can see that we have got some features which is very very useful and i will be talking about all those features in this particular video so the first feature which i wanted to talk about is the uh, capability of the uh, entire library supporting asynchronous operation so you can do every single operation with asynchronous so earlier we used to do the create dynamic instance to create dynamic tables using just the create dynamic instance method but now we also support the async feature so you can just call create dynamic instance async so you can use synchronously or asynchronously so if you want to use async you just have to use this async uh, in the suffix and then you can use the await keyword to make use of it and the same thing is going to happen for the create dynamic set and the compare dynamic instant async as well so it's all going to be dynamic over here so that's the async support that we have got and not only that we have also got the auto fixture integration if you have not really heard about auto fixture i have talked about that in many of my um, youtube videos you can go ahead and watch there and i also covered that in the uh, udemy courses uh, so auto fixture is one of the most popular library which will help you uh, to generate the automatic data creation so this is one of the a very very popular library for you to do that and it will be helpful for you to create like dynamic data for the given type and things so we have uh, extended the auto fixture library within this particular uh, dynamic library where you can just specify something like the auto dot string or auto dot email auto dot date or auto dot phone number in your uh, table and it will automatically give those uh, automatically brings those data for you over here this is one of the nice improvement so the, some of these following support data types are these like auto dot string uh, int decimal double uh, date and date time boolean guid email phone url name address city zip uh, code i have not really added a lot of different features but again community is open for you guys to go ahead and update that i will just let you to do that but for now these are the things which is currently being supported i have also added the feature where you can extend the type using uh, the registry uh, register entry type uh, for a given type and that will generate the uh, the data for that particular type as well so you can use that particular feature as well pretty much available in the auto fixtures that is uh, extended over here and apart from that we also have got some more features uh, which are very very uh, useful as well and one of the uh, features which i really like is the uh, filter row select the columns and create nested dynamic instance so i'm talking about all these features in this particular video and i will show you how that actually works so the first thing that you have to do uh, is you need to go to one of your project where you are using uh, the uh, rec and roll and then go to the uh, manage nuget package and if you are using the uh, exit automation rec and roll dynamics package you should see there is going to be an update coming up over here so make sure that you update to the latest version the latest version is 1.1.1 so i'm going to go ahead and update that over here and now if you go to the solution explorer and if you expand the exit automation uh, rec and roll dynamic library you'll also notice that we have got the auto fixture library being used uh, along with this particular package that is one thing that has been added just recently uh, uh, over here uh, and now i'm going to go ahead and create some of the feature files and i will show you all the different features that i was just talking about so for doing that i'm going to go ahead and add a new feature file uh, and i'm going to call this as an new table transformer transformation feature uh okay dot feature should be fine uh, and over here i'm gonna write the feature name so let it be this one uh, and i'm gonna add the scenario which i have already done and i'm gonna paste it over here and you can see that this is the same table that we have already discussed in our ongoing uh, video series uh, in YouTube so if you go over here you can see that this is the create user uh, we used to pass the data like uh, I enter the user detail as follows like a name duration work salary grade and email and uh, this is how we actually do for creating a table and the same thing goes for the dynamic data uh, creation as well same thing I have done over here but this time I'm gonna generate the random user data so while I 
specify underscore here, the system will automatically, the library will automatically generate the data for you, like a random data based on what data that you wanted to expect. So like CD will have a random data, zip code will have a random data. And you can also specify something like auto.string if that type is not currently being supported by the library itself. So you can see that currently uh, the, the supported things are, and this library is like phone, email, uh, URL, uh, and the name, first name, last name, address, city, and zip code, like most commonly uh, used types. But if you see that uh, these are not fitting in your requirement for your test that you're doing, then you can just say auto.string and that will bring a random string as well. That is what I have din done over here. So you can also, instead of over here for the phone number, you can also say auto.int because phone number is gonna be integer. So you can do that as well and it's gonna totally work as expected. So this is the uh, table that we have got and I'm going to go to the definition and I'm going to go and create the step definition over here. So let me just create a new step definition. I'm going to call this a uh, new feature uh, steps dot CS uh, and I'm going to make this as public and I'm going to put binding and I'm going to paste the thing that I've just copied right uh, and I'm gonna go and I'm, what I'm gonna do in order to use this particular uh, feature that I was talking about like how to generate the data all you have to do is just use the same data table you don't have to change anything over here you just have to say uh, dynamic data table dot and there is something called as you can see that create dynamic instance with auto fixture. So this is the new uh, method, a new extension method being added uh, in our new um, uh, new library. Uh, and over here, you can see that as it names, like it says create dynamic instance with uh, auto fixture, it is going to generate the data for you automatically. I'm not gonna do all those implementation. It is very, very straightforward as well. All you have to do is just data dot, maybe just say, console dot uh, right line uh, and then you can just say data dot name uh, it is gonna print the name for you if we have the name no we have first name so i'm gonna say data dot first name uh, it is going to go and print it out for that i mean you can do for all of them but i'm not gonna type everything uh, and show you how it's gonna look like and first of all, let's see what is gonna be the data which has been created, which is automatically generated uh, in this data table for you. So the moment I execute all of these, we will have a new uh, uh, test there. So I'm gonna go and debug it. And we have a breakpoint here. So you see that it's gonna go and hit there. And I'm gonna execute this and look at this data that we have, the dynamic data. So if I go and expand this i enumerable visualizer look at that we have got all these data the first name is going to be john last name is williams uh, email is this so you see that this is an automatic uh, email uh, phone number is this one this is the address which has been created uh, city uh, and zip code and street name so the street name i was using the auto dot string so it is automatically generated some random string which has come over here so you see that now if you are really not caring about the data you can just use this auto dot string or auto dot int or auto dot name or phone number or whatever that you want to use you can do that and it will automatically do things for you and if it is a common name which is supported by the library you can just use underscore and it will be resolved for you automatically as well so that is one of the advantage of using this particular library. So this is one of the cool features that uh, we have added. And another feature I wanted to show you um, is, let's say if I'm gonna go over here, uh, and let's say if you just go to any of your test, for instance, the test that we have already worked out, which is the create user. As you can see, uh, we have got a user details uh, table, like dynamic uh, data table where we have got the uh, name, duration, work, salary, grade, and email, right? This is for the name. But what if I wanted to fill the name, address, and uh, and probably uh, its social detail, and his uh, salary details, uh, and maybe his uh, employment details, something like that, all that I need to fill in a big, gigantic form. All I have to do it is I will either keep extending this table in a big, long, gigantic form, or I will put it in an external file, and then I read it through, 
which is kind of pain, right? Like this is not something that we really wanted to do it because the the whole idea of this uh, BDD or the Kirkin is to have all the information displayed for the user to read it through. And if you put it uh, in a JSON file, it doesn't make any sense. So in order to avoid this particular problem, uh, the way we can solve is uh, I've just added this new feature and this feature, let me just go copy it because I know this is gonna take a long time. Uh, I have actually implemented that over here. And the feature we call as the nested dynamic data tables. So as you can see over here, and as it names, this particular um, a row, as you can see over here in this table, we have got entity and we have got some properties uh, where we have got a user details uh, where I'm gonna say, uh, the uh, the name as Karthik, duration worked as 10, uh, grade as 1, and the employee as this. Uh, and similarly, for the address, I can just say these, these, this information. So I can keep on adding this information. And you see that this is more like a JSON format of data that I have put it over there. So especially this like a complex JSON, but I have put it like a like a simple row so that we can then read it through from this particular JSON value and then I can get the values out from this. So now you can see that I don't really have a, I have to put like a long gigantic um, uh, row with multiple columns, but rather you can just have like two columns and all the values sitting as a JSON uh, value over there. So this is one of these straightforward way we can use it. So the way you can actually implement this step definition is you just generate the step definition and I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna paste it. Oops, I think I just do something wrong. Let me go generate the step definition, uh, go to step definition, I'm gonna save it. Uh, and I'm going to uh, do this. I wanna say dynamic data is equal to and I'm gonna say data table dot, and you can actually notice that we have something called as create nested dynamic instance method. So this create dynamic instance method is actually, um, it, it has both the async version and non-async version. So let's say I'm gonna use the async version over here. I can just use the uh, await keyword and then I can just use the uh, async of task. And this becomes the way that you can read it from the nested uh, dynamic uh, instance of a table. And now the way you actually read the data out is, so if you want to read the data from this particular uh, entity, which is the user entity, all you have to do is like user dot name. So like entity dot user dot name will give you the the name of that particular user and if you're going to say entity dot user dot um sorry entity dot address dot street name then it will get give you the street name so i'll show you what i really mean about that so if i just go to this step definition over here uh, i'm going to say uh, so entity in here is the data that we have got so data dot uh, address dot uh, street name something like that I'm gonna put a breakpoint over here. Let me try to build the solution so that I will get my test being displayed, which is this one, and I'm gonna debug it. And I'll show you how the table is also gonna be panned out over here. So if I go, go to the data, and if I go and view the data over here, look at that, how the data has been panned out. So like, it's an array of data, it's like it has got name, Karthik, duration work 10, grade as one, email as this, so write the street name as this LDU place, city is Auckland, zip code is this number. So now you already got the idea, right? Like how the data is going to be panned out. So over here, if I say data.address.street name, then it's going to get me the, the name of the street. So let me just hit continue. And if I go to the test explorer, look at that. The name is this LDU place. So it is reading that information for me from this complex uh, JSON structure. So this is how you can actually do uh, work with a complex data if your data has got like a lot of data that you need to pass in. So this is another way for you to uh, to improve uh, the way that you write uh, the, the code uh, or write the scenarios and step definitions uh, in, the, uh, in the BDD format. Uh, and the, the next step that I wanted to show you, probably the most easiest uh, one is the upgrade that I wanted to show you is the um, 
uh, it's the async operation or async support that we have just added. So if we go to the existing code over here on the on the dynamic uh, table uh, over here, and if I go to the step definition, you can see that we have been using the create dynamic instance, uh, which only uh, supported the uh, non-async version. But if your tests are running in the latest .NET 8, and if you go and, if you guys want to upgrade to the latest version of .NET, then all you have to do is just uh, use the async version as well. So we do support it right now so you just have to say uh, async task of the uh, data table dot create dynamic instance async so just have to put this async over here it is supported there we go so we have the async version and similarly it goes for the create dynamic set as well so you just have to say uh, async uh, it is going to support the async version of the dynamic set for multiple uh, rows that you wanted to iterate through that is also been supported so i can just say await and async of task and that's that's done so that is going to be uh, done for us over here as well so this is another upgrade that we have got uh, and the changes if you just go to the change list over here you can see that you can also try out like how you can do the registry of the entity type just by yourself like you see how it goes uh, and also uh, see what are the other features that we have got like select columns uh, and also the filter rows like how you want to filter it and one of the things which I did not mention is the uh, create the horizontal uh, table from an existing vertical table. So if you have got a big gigantic vertical table and if you want to convert it into horizontal table, you can also do that. So if I just go over here, um, so you can see that we have got this horizontal table, uh, something like this. And if I want to convert that to a vertical table for some reason, you can also do that so that you can actually have the data in a more streamlined fashion like how you wanted to do it so that you can you, you can actually get all the data one by one like a field and value way instead of having all the names and age and is active something like this like how it is shown over here so these are the upgrades and i'm quite excited to, for you to try it out and let me know how it goes we are going to add even more new features in coming days but for now these are the features that we have got I'm sure this is going to be quite exciting. Once again, thank you so much for supporting uh, using this particular library and you guys have a great day.